Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Maris from the Resuscitation Coach. On this channel we do all things resuscitation. On today's session we'll be looking at the American Heart Association ACLS systematic approach. When we start looking at the AHA systematic approach, it's extremely important to follow the approach as it helps you in difficult situation to follow a structured process and procedure which will help you to proceed and achieve the best results. So the components of the systematic approach, we always start with the initial assessment and then from there we move on to our BLS assessment, your primary assessment and your secondary assessment. In your initial evaluation, if you found that your victim is unconscious, immediately you will start off with a BLS assessment. If your patient is conscious, then you'll start with your primary assessment, then your secondary assessment. So what is your BLS assessment? Step number one, check for response, tap and shout, hey, 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 are you okay? Check for breathing, Check pulse. Make sure you don't check for longer than 10 seconds. After 10 seconds, if you cannot find breathing, you cannot find the pulse, immediately activate the code blue if you're in a hospital or call your local emergency number and immediately start pushing hard and fast at a rate of 100 to 120 pushes per minute. Remember to allow full chest recoil. Don't interrupt CPR for longer than 10 seconds and do not hyperventilate. You want to give just enough air to see visible chest rise. The moment your defibrillator or your AED arrive, immediately start making use of it. Now, when you move on to your primary assessment, you have to make sure that your patient's airway is opened, maintained and protected. When we give ventilation again, just enough air to see visible chest rise. Make sure we have adequate oxygenation in a conscious or a semi-conscious patient. Make sure you monitor the patient's respiration rate and saturation. Under C, get your IV in. Once your IV is in, get your ECG on. Once the ECG is connected, immediately identify the rhythm. Once you've identified the rhythm, you can start doing the necessary treatments. Also, if you're doing cardiac arrest management, make sure that we're performing high quality CPR. And in your non-cardiac arrest patients, don't forget to make sure you check your heart rate and your BP constantly your temperature also and your glucose. And the D for disability, it includes your AFPU. Remember AFPU stands for alert, voice, pain, unresponsive. Check your GCS or your Glasgow Coma Scale and don't forget to check your patient's pupil. And last but not least, E for exposure. Make sure you remove everything that you can observe for any injuries, any trauma, any bruising, anything like that. Your secondary assessment start off with a focus history, starting off with your signs and symptoms, your allergies, your medication, past medical history, last meal, events leading up to why did the patient get into the situation, from there, we should always consider the six H's and T's. And always think hypoxia, hydrogen ion acidosis, hypothermia, hyperkalemia, hypovolemia, your five T's, tension pneumothorax, tamponade, thrombosis pulmonary, thrombosis coronary, toxins. For me personally, I always follow a head to toe approach when I look at my H's and T's to make it easier for me to remember. Remember ultimately our ultimate goal 
of the Bialis primary and the secondary assessments is to help and stop the patient's downward spiral. Remember, the more time we waste, the less brain and heart muscle is left. And that's why the guiding words, time is muscle. Again, always make sure you follow the systematic approach. If you benefited from this video, please consider subscribing, hit the like button and smash that notification bell so that you are informed when we upload our next video. Your support is much appreciated. Have a fantastic day. We'll see you in the next video.